So Rebecca's in the cab of the tractor. I think we got everything set up to start baling hay. So uh, we're just gonna go ahead. I'm gonna stay on the outside of the tractor and make sure she's going the right speed. Once it starts making bales, I'll jump on the hay wagon and start stacking them. So far everything's going pretty good. The baler hasn't missed a single tie so far. Um, I think we're about halfway through. So I'm not, I can't remember exactly how high we can stack the wagon. I took the rack off the back of the wagon and I knew that the rack was the maximum height that I could stack it and still be able to back into the barn because the barn's got a really low doorway. So. Uh, I think this is a pretty good spot to go ahead and just stop and unload the wagon. I think I got about somewhere about 63, 64 bales on there. And uh, we're going to unhitch it from the baler. We're going to bring probably the Alice Chalmers tractor, tractor around. We're going to hitch up to the, the wagon. We're going to take it back to the, uh, to the barn. We're going to go ahead and unload that and go ahead and stop and get a drink. Uh, probably some sunscreen and some gloves. But uh, that's what we're going to do next. All right, so right now it's 322 in the afternoon. It's 85 degrees, but it feels like 94. And there ain't no shade out here. That's the way it goes. So I've had several people tell me instead of trying to back the wagon into the barn that if I can push the wagon in with the front of the tractor it's actually easier. And I just happen to have a hole drilled in the bucket on the Alice Chalmers. So we're going to turn it around, we're going to hitch up the wagon actually to the bucket of the tractor and then we're going to drive it into the barn and see how much easier it is.
All right, we got the uh, got the hay wagon all unloaded. It's all hooked back up, and I think hopefully, you know, hopefully we'll get the rest of this all in the next load. But I think uh, everything's going pretty smooth. So I'm going to go ahead and put a drone in the air, see if we get some drone footage as we're finishing this up. got done uh, bailing the majority of the hay we ended up leaving the windrow on that very far end down there because it was mostly in the shade all day it was still a little green so I think what we're gonna do now is we'll probably unhitch the, the wagon again we'll take it back to the barn to unload it and tomorrow we'll probably rake that out into the Sun a little bit farther and then then I'll bail those last bales that are over there probably only gonna be about five or six over there but we'll probably finish that up tomorrow but uh, Rebecca ended up driving the tractor all day I had the easy job I was in the air conditioning <laughs> she, well it was easy till you helped me unload the <laughs> yeah yeah she got to she got a workout when we unloaded in the barn so what'd you think oh the tractor is great nice yeah. cold it was pretty slow at the beginning though isn't it yeah there at the end we were <laughs> there was all the little places in the field where I'd left the windrows too big and they wouldn't fit in the baler. So she, she ended up putting in like medium and she was going around like doing figure eights trying to catch up, catch all the hay that was missed. I and never they, knocked you off the trailer. No, she kept Almost. on, she looked back at me a few times cause she'd make me, uh, she'd about knock me off my feet. But uh, um, I think she was having fun when she had it in medium running around. It was a lot better than low. Yeah, low was pretty slow going, ain't it? Yeah. Yep. All right, guys. Well, I think we'll go ahead and uh, hitch up the um, the wagon and get it out of here, and then I'll be back tomorrow, and uh, we'll finish up the rest of this hay.
So this morning I, I got up and I ended up, I stacked the hay in the barn off of the wagon from last night. And I did that this morning while it was cooler. It was like 72 degrees when I stacked the hay in the barn and that was a lot better time to do that. Uh, there's not a lot of air movement in the barn, but it definitely helped doing it early in the morning. So now it is 10 o'clock. Uh, it's just after 10 o'clock actually. And the dew seems to be off the ground. So this will be a good time. We're gonna rake the hay that's actually back here along this tree line. We're gonna rake that out into the field a little bit further so it's not in the shade. And we're probably gonna let give that a couple more hours to dry. Um, so right now, uh, check on this. It's actually almost 1030. So it's 77 degrees out. It's still fairly cool, really, but it's like 82% humidity. Um, so you can kind of imagine with it being that humid, um, I, I think that really does affect the dry time on the hay. So I'm gonna go ahead, I've, I've got the hay rake all hooked up. We're gonna probably rake this out about 20 feet. So it's gonna take a few passes to get that out into the sunlight. So it's about two in the afternoon now, so the hay out here has probably been sitting in the sun for like three hours, and it's got to dry a whole extra day over what we baled yesterday. So it already looked a lot better this morning when I raked it. I could tell it was a lot drier than yesterday. So I think it's good enough now that we'll just go ahead and bale it up. I'm not gonna use a hay rack. I'm not gonna put it on a wagon. I'm just gonna go ahead and adjust this. I'm just gonna drop them on the ground. And I'm just gonna come back with a small trailer and pick them up. I mean, it's only gonna be probably five to 10 bales, not, worth messing with a hay rack for that that few of bales. So let's go ahead and finish this up. All right, we got uh, all the hay picked up and it's all stacked here in the barn. So this one section right here was completely empty when we started and uh, it's almost filled it up. So the bale counter on the baler, it counted 142 bales and it didn't miss a single tie. And it actually started out empty. It didn't have any grass or any bales in it whatsoever. And it still tied the first one, which I was surprised. The only thing was is it ended up being about a foot longer. It ended up being a bale about this long. So I ended up, I took it over to uh, one of the windrows and I opened it up and I spread it back out so we could rebale it. So 142 bales minus the one, first one that I, I split open. Um, 141 bales is what we ended up with. That's 47 bales an acre. Um, and I think that's great. That's the most we've ever got off the hay field. And I was told what you're shooting for, around here people shoot for 50 bales an acre. If you can get 50 bales an acre, you've got a good hay field. So uh, I, think, uh, I think I'm happy with the results that we got. So that baler, Everything went really well, this cutting of hay. I, I, I can't really complain. Um, 
you know, the, the hay rake always works perfectly, the tether works perfectly, and this baler ran flawlessly the whole time. For a 62, 63 year old baler, I think that's pretty impressive. The only thing that ends up being a problem is the, uh, uh, is the sickle bar mower. I mean, that whole thing is just a frustration in itself. Uh, always having to unclog it, you know, about probably four to eight times every lap around the field. So uh, besides the sickle bar mower, which is always a problem, everything else just ran flawlessly. And for a $400 baler that I bought, um, I really don't think, uh, I think it's definitely proven to be worth the money I spent on it, that's for sure. So I am really happy to get all this hay put up. So we have enough hay for our animals, and we probably actually have a little bit extra. So last year, we ended up saving 150 bales for our animals, plus we thought we would get some steers um, probably in the fall and raise them through winter time or in the winter time. That never ended up happening. We didn't end up getting them till like March, I don't think, till we got the steers. So we haven't used up all that hay. It's still sitting over there. And uh, here, let me do a quick count real quick. So after doing a quick count, if I'm counting that right, there's 43 bales left over from last year. Now it was good that I had them because we didn't get a first cut this year. I've been feeding those through the summer but you can still, I, I still had way too many, more than I needed. So I think after what I'm seeing now, if I had 100 bales kept in the barn, that would probably get me through the winter, plus I'd still have a little bit of a safety net if I needed it. So probably 100 bales is all I really need. So this is, this is definitely plenty. So at least I've got enough for my animals. In fact, I probably have some that um, maybe this winter... Uh, we can reassess how much is in here, and I might end up selling some of this in the wintertime. Usually I think hay prices end up going up in the wintertime uh, because less people have any to sell, and uh, that may be an opportunity that I can take, take advantage of. So I think I mentioned it in the sickle bar video that I've got to go to night shift here soon. Uh, we're going to do a shutdown at work and do a lot of maintenance, so I'm going to end up working 12-hour shifts and I'm going to work probably 45 to 50 of them in a row. So the most I've ever worked in a row was 50 12-hour shifts and uh, without a day off. So hopefully I don't break that record. Uh, I'm hoping that I don't. Uh, but once that's all done and over with, um, then I'll go back to filming videos. But in that time period, I'll, there'll be a lot less videos. And it'll probably be a lot of short, sweet videos of me just doing my farm chores and running around. It'd be more of a vlog style probably because that's all I'll probably have time to do while working 12 hour nights. But uh, yeah, I wouldn't expect a lot of videos here coming out um, probably through the end of August through November. It's going to be, I'm going to be working so much that I just won't have the time. Well guys, I think that pretty much wraps up this video. I am so happy to have the hay done and stacked in the barn. It is such a relief um, from the moment you cut the hay and finally get it all baled and in the barn. Um, it's such a relief when it's all done and over with because that's a lot of stuff that's got to happen right in a row and everything's just got to work out right. The weather's got to work, the equipment's got to work, and everything pretty much did this time. So I'm, I'm happy that this is done. And if you guys do like, you know, if you guys like tractor videos and homesteading videos, um, if you like this kind of video, just follow along, uh, hit the subscribe button. I would appreciate it. I do not ask you guys to subscribe in every video like everybody else does on YouTube. I only do this maybe once or twice a year. So it does help out the channel. If you do hit the subscribe button, I would appreciate it. So thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next one.